Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, I'm gonna show you five things that you can do to get started with Power BI Desktop. That's coming up. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, so you're just getting started with Power BI and you don't know where to go. I've been to a bunch of conferences, talked to some people, and it's a common thing where we're just trying to explore Power BI for the first time and we're not sure what to do. So I wanted to give you these five things just to get you started and to get you pointed in the right direction. So the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna download and install Power BI Desktop. You can do this by going to powerbi.com, go to products, and then Power BI Desktop, and you can download the client directly from there. This is only available for Windows machines, but there are options for you to use this on a Mac, so be sure to look out for those. If you're on Windows 10, you can also get this from the Windows Store, and that gives you the added benefit of being automatically updated every month when the new Power BI Desktop comes out. The best thing about using Power BI Desktop is it's free. You don't have to pay anything. So you can just download Power BI Desktop, install it, and start creating awesome reports without spending any money. All right, the second thing we need to do is we need to get some data. You can do this in one of two ways. Either one, you can hit the get data on the initial box that pops up when you open up Power BI Desktop, or you can select get data from the ribbon bar. When you do this, there are a ton of data sources that we can pull data from. This can be CSV files, this could be Excel files, databases, Azure services, and other services out there like Salesforce or uh, CRM or other things like that, GitHub. There are a ton of options. We continue to release new data sources all the time. So something that you're gonna connect to is probably in this list. If it's not, we also have options for just generic ODBC and OLEDB providers that you can use if your data source isn't there and they offer those as options. Once you select your data source and provide any credentials that may be required, you're gonna get the option to either load that data or to edit the selection of what's coming in. When you go to edit, that's gonna bring up the Power Query windows, at which point you can transform and shape your data the way that you want it to look before you pull it into Power BI Desktop itself. This is a lot of fun. It's very easy to use from a GUI experience. So check out all the options that you can do to shape your data. And once you're done shaping your data, you can just load it directly into Power BI Desktop at that point. All right, the third step that we're gonna do is we need to do maybe some additional modeling. Now this is optional, you don't have to do this step, but it really enhances your, your experience with creating visuals and getting the report to look the way that you want it to do. So from a modeling perspective, we can go to the data tab or we can be on the report canvas and just hit the modeling tab up on the ribbon bar and we can add calculations that may enhance the data that we've already pulled in. On top of the calculations that you may add, you can also add relationships which will enhance the slicing and dicing of data when you're interacting with your visuals. Modeling itself is a very extensive topic and not something I'm gonna cover in this video, but there's a ton of resources out there that you can go to learn more about using the DAX language, as well as creating those calculations in an efficient way. So be sure to look out for those resources. I'll have some links down in the description below to help you out. All right, we've got our data. We've enhanced it with some modeling, maybe some extra calculations, added a few relationships. Now it's time for number four, which is to create awesome visuals on a report and start gaining insights from our data. We can do this in one of two ways and I'll talk about another way after this. The first way is you can just select on the visual in the upper right in the visual pane. You can select the visual that you wanna do. Maybe it's a bar chart, maybe it's a tree map, maybe it's a slicer, something of that nature. You can select that, it'll be on your canvas. When you select that visual, you can drag fields into the field well so that you can add data to those visuals. The other way you can start is just by dragging that field directly onto your canvas. This is the part that everyone loves because it's really fun creating these visuals and seeing everything interacting in the way that it does. I just wanna warn you that in traditional report writing, you're gonna spend most of your time in the modeling side of things to get those calculations right so that your visuals really pop. But like I said, the modeling thing's optional, so if you just pull in your data, start dragging things onto the canvas, create those visuals. If it's good enough for you and your business, then you're good to go. Which leads me to my fifth item. We talked about how you can drag things onto the canvas and get those visuals lined up right, but 
Who needs to drag things over to your canvas when all you need to do is just ask a question? You can double click on the canvas, it'll pop up a Q&A window. As of recording of this film, it's a preview feature, so make sure you turn on the preview feature. But once you double click, you can just start asking your question and it will the visual will just appear on the screen and you can change what the visual type is and go from there. So this is a great way, if you don't know what you're looking for, to instantly create visuals that have meaning for your report. Q&A is a really fun feature and I'm really happy that it's inside of Power BI Desktop. All right, a bonus item for you. Once we've got our reports done, we've, we've pulled our data in, we've modeled the data, created those relationships, created those awesome visuals on a report. We've got great insights. But what is it if it's just in our local Power BI desktop file? So the bonus item is to publish that report up to the Power BI service to where we can share this out with our organization and folks that really need to use that report to gain meaning for the business. So you can just hit the publish button up on the ribbon bar after you've signed into Power BI and that will get published up to a workspace in the Power BI service, at which point you can then share that out to your colleagues. All right, I'd love to know what you think. Go ahead and leave your questions down below relating to Power BI Desktop, and I'll try to answer it as best I can. Knowing that this is a very large topic, there's so much more than what I've talked about in this video that you can dive into with Power BI Desktop, and there's a lot of great resources out there. But if you do have questions with getting started with Power BI Desktop, leave that down below and let us know, and we'll get it to you. All right, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.